At some point, you're going to want to add your own data. It's great that all this built-in, you know, base map data is there, but if you're making a unique map, maybe a radical map or, uh, you know, a map following a certain aesthetic, it's important to be able to add your own special data that's nuanced. For Bemidji, for example, I'm interested in ducks because uh, there's a lot of duck and goose hunting that goes on up there and whether or not you're pro shooting birds or not. Uh, that's a cultural remnant of the area and so you know some duck duck data might add something to the map that might otherwise be missing um, so don't be afraid to search for your own data another big cultural thing that's uh, up in the Bemidji area is snowmobile trails and in Minnesota in general that's a huge deal and so uh, if you go to the Minnesota Geospatial Commons you know every state has its own some states have better data finding solutions than others. Um, if you do run into any trouble, don't be afraid to ask Jamie Martindale, our extraordinary map librarian, which map librarian basically means data sleuth, data hound. She can find anything. Um, so don't be afraid to contact her to, to help. But you can go here, and I'm going to try to click. So they have snowmobile data and shapefile and Esri Geo database form. Let's download it as a shapefile. And... Um, I'm going to call it snowmobiles. Let's double click this and see what's up in here. So, yep, it looks like it just has one shape file in there, so I didn't have to unzip it. Uh, so, there should be a zip file called snowmobile zip here. That's good. Some files, you know, when you download them, they have more than one shape file in them and then when you upload them it can be a problem and I know the Minnesota site does that sometimes so I just looked so let's go to layer add new layer let's go here and if we have our data you have your data I should say you can click on new tile set select data and here it shows you all the data types it accepts um, I'll show you in a second it's underneath this so Mapbox tiles, KML, GPX, GeoJSON, shapefiles, or CSVs, um, and it'll turn them into vector files. You can also upload GeoTIFFs. Those will be obviously converted to raster. All right, let's click this. I already uploaded the ducks polygons, but it wasn't that exciting. So, But I will show you while this we wait for this to upload that down here now under the tile sets, you'll find a new one called ducks polygon. That's because I uploaded it. So any tile set you upload will show up here as an option in the future. And it takes a second to process, so I'm going to stop talking so it can do so quickly. Okay, so uh, now it says it's done processing. So we can close that out. And somewhere in here there should be something called snowmobiles. So let's click on that. And notice that right now it's set for fill, but if we know one thing about trails, what are they normally represented as? Lines. So we're going to switch that to lines. Uh, let's look at the minimum zoom here. That makes sense. That works. And let's hit create layer. So now we have snowmobile layers, and I'm going to put that above roads because obviously uh, they go over roads normally. And let's zoom in on our little Bemidji friends here. Uh-huh! I just saw the snowmobile trail. Okay, so we have snowmobile trails and again we could go to our Adobe color site and color this something kind of special, but for now let's go uh, a disgusting kind of turquoise. So that's how you can add your own data sets. And it, actually, this is the great thing about starting from a blank slate. If I wanted to be really radical, I could create just snowmobile and cross-country ski trails and pretend that, you know, roads don't even exist. All right, have fun. Thanks for watching.